Today we are on a mission to figure out what do I actually give five stars? <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today we're gonna to be doing what I'm calling a five star audit. I feel like <laughs> lately I've just been picking up the books that, you know, I think sound good. I hear someone speak about and it kind of sounds like my thing, but I'm not thinking critically about what I'm actually giving five stars. I could be picking books up over and over again and not enjoying that. What's not clicking? What's not clicking? So today I wanna to find 10 features, tropes, aspects of books that I give five stars regularly. At least three times is my barometer, is my standard that I need. And that way it'll help me figure out what I should prioritize reading, what new releases I should actually get, that kind of thing. Now I will say, I do want to show you maybe one or two examples of that feature then that's on my TBR, but I filmed a video yesterday, which you'll see later in the week, that involved me tearing apart my TBR basically. <laughs> And usually I know where pretty much every book is. Like it all has its place. They stay in the same place in my car, on the shelves. I could tell you where every book is. I have no idea where any of my books are right now. <laughs> so I might just have to like put pictures in if I think of them, if I can think of stuff that's on my TBR. But also it's gonna make it a little bit harder for me to look for stuff because I really like, I, I don't know where stuff is. <laughs> Anyways, let's just get into us figuring out the first trope feature that I do give five stars. Okay, so I have got my Goodreads open because I find it easier to make the links when I see all of the five stars grouped together and with the covers. I could use a spreadsheet. I have spreadsheets with all of my like rating info, but that will just say the name of the book. And I find it easier to visualize here looking at the Goodreads. Also rather than like standing in front of the bookshelf where all the books are messed up by rating, I feel like this is gonna help me make the connections more easily. So I guess one that we can start with that's like pretty obvious that I think I like, I feel like I've got two in my mind that I know. <laughs> and then after that, we'll struggle. Let's go mixed media. Mixed media is something that I love and we can see we've got As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson and A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which is there. I just gave True Crime Story by Joseph Knox five stars. Night Swim by Megan Golding, I guess you could say has mixed media elements as well. I guess you could say one of my favorite books of all time, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, where is that? That has some mixed media elements, like with them cutting in and the whole idea of it being a letter, I guess. So yeah, mixed media, I would say is something that always gets me. <laughs> so mixed media, I do love mixed media. It just, listen, it gives a little bit of extra spice. It gives a little bit of extra drama. Just this is good. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I love the kind of new storytelling elements that come with mixed media. Like we said, The Good Girl's Guide to Murder series is absolutely wonderful for mixed media. True Crime Story was a lot of interviews. The Night Swim by Megan Golding was podcasts. If a book has mixed media in it, I'm probably gonna give it five stars. Like, I don't know, I just love it. I just love mixed media. I love books and novels that in general tear up the traditional structure of what a book is, you know, the kind of chapter linear format. However, a book can mess with that and like, you know, gender as a construct, tear it apart. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> mess it up a bit. I love it. So a few examples, I can't find them, but a few examples I can think of on my TBR. We have The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. Now, to be fair, I did give The Appeal four stars, but I think that's because I expected so much of it. So The Twyford Code and The um, Alperton Angels, which is Janice Hallett's next book that comes out in January, but I know that that is like a box of research on a cult that is found, so it's all research items, so I think that could be really great. Also, Six Stories by Matt Waslowski is mixed media. That's all I can really think of right this second, but like I said, my TBR is a mess. <laughs> Another one that I can think of right off the top of my head is very relevant for now. <laughs> is Dark Academia. I seem to love Dark Academia. Let's find some examples for you. They Never Learn by Lane Fargo could class as Dark Academia. Uh, Catherine House, definitely Dark Academia. Uh, Ninth House, Dark Academia. Secret History, Dark Academia. I would say almost all of the Dark Academia books I've read, I have given five stars. The exceptions I can think of are uh, If We Were Villains. I didn't really like that. 
Is there any other ones? I guess Trudy Devious would cast as Dark Academia, which I gave four stars. I liked that. So I'm just a sucker for Dark Academia. I don't know why. <laughs> I just seem to love it. I just, <laughs> it gets me in a chokehold. Next is Dark Academia. Very relevant for the time. Everyone's reading Dark Academia. But, you know, I think I have like a, a link to Dark Academia in my blood. That's quite dramatic. Because the secret history brought on a tart, although I now recognise it has flaws, you know. <laughs> has flaws to it but I think it's very influential in the dark academia space it's not necessarily the ultimate dark academia to ever exist but um you know that was the book that got me back into reading when I had stopped reading for many years and then ninth house Catherine house um what else did I say <laughs> oh they never learn like I almost give five stars to almost every Dark Academia I read. So a few examples on my TBR. We have In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which you'll notice doesn't have its dust jacket on because I am reading this right now. Only 30 pages in, so I literally have no thoughts on it yet. But this is a great example. Babble by R.F. Quang. Like, I feel like Dark Academia is in its era and I'm going to be reading quite a lot of Dark Academia soon. So we will be putting this to the test, how much I actually give five stars. But yeah, there's just something about Dark Academia that I love. Okay, now we get to a situation where... We're struggling. <laughs> okay, let's have a think. What about like groups, like big groups of friends, like found family groups of friends? I guess I do like, I, I'm not big on tropes, right? Like when people talk about, I love this trope, I love this trope, like that's not how my brain works. I guess this is tr us trying to figure that out is essentially what tropes I like. So found family, we can go for Crooked Kingdom, Strange Case again, I would say as found family. What else do have I given five stars that has like a found family element to it? I think you could say Wayward Children as well. Like, especially in the latter books in the series, the children who go to Eleanor West School for Wayward Children, who are the ones who have gone into these portal worlds, only they understand each other. Only they understand what they have been through. So I would say the Wayward Children series as well. So found family, I think, is something I really really enjoy. So next one was found family. Obviously we have Queen Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, which like, oh my god, the girls, the family that they build, family of monsters. It makes me cry a little bit. Maybe I'm just gonna cry a bit. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. Okay, what happened? Maybe I'll cry. I just do love in my fantasy, if I'm gonna read YA fantasy, I love it to be a cast of characters in the found family. I just feel like that's the vibe. That's something, oh, I love it. I love having a good group of characters. You know, it reminds me of stuff that I used to watch and love when I was younger, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I feel like that's kind of like the OG found family because you have Giles, father figure. Oh my God, Giles, Giles, Giles. We need more like Giles. If I write a book, hmm, I've just decided now I need a Giles. I need a Giles. <laughs> So in terms of ones that are on my TBR, one that sticks in my brain is The Gilded Walls by Roshani Chotsky. I know that has a found family element and I do need to read that. I think I got it like two Christmases ago, not last Christmas, Christmas before. And I would really like to get around to that soon. So yeah, and though it's starting another series, but we'll just, we'll just ignore that. Yeah, I can't think of any others right now, but I'm sure there's lots, but I do love found family. Oh, on that note, on the note of family, I love sisters. I love sister relationships. So we can say Once and Future Witches is about three sisters. The Project by Courtney Summers is about uh, sisters. Sadie by Courtney Summers, wherever that is, that's probably down here. Yeah, Sadie by Courtney Summers, I gave five stars, is about sisters. I feel like Courtney Summers just does sister relationships like no other. <laughs> Any other ones that I can pick out that I gave five stars? Uh, the Broken Girls has a sister element to it, but it's not really about that. So yeah, I seem to have a thing for sisters. <laughs> I don't know why, but I really love, I mean, I don't have a sister, right? As I don't really understand my pull towards it. Um, I do have a brother, but I really love when sisters have like this sisterhood and this strong relationship and they care for each other so much. I think there's something really interesting about that relationship, but often sisters are often like, opposed against one another I think as like young girls that's often a theme but seeing them come together in adulthood is something I really enjoy so sisters is another one that I need to look out for in my reading in the future and then I guess coming off of found family sisters I love sisters, sisters are doing it for themselves <laughs> 
I love sisters in books. Again, like I said, I have a brother, so I don't have sisters, but I think there's a lot of interesting dynamics that come from sister relationships. I do really want to reread The Once and Future Witches soon by Alexi Harrow because... Well, the sister relationship in that, if you've never read it and you like sisters, please. The bond that they have, because at the start of the book, they're separate. They've been separated for many years and they come back together and relearn each other's ways and what they love about each other. And... Kills me. <laughs> so sisters on my TBR. I'm sure there's loads. The OG sisters, Pride and Prejudice, the Bennett sisters, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got So Many Beginnings by Bethany C. Morrow, which is a Little Women reimagining, a Little Women remix. This is one I've wanted to get to for ages. Yeah, I love sisters, guys. <laughs> oh, I guess one that we can talk about is like an isolated closed circle murder mystery. Surely I've given three of those five stars. Let's have a look. Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, one by One by Ruth Ware. I've given five stars. I'm being strict on it being a murder mystery, by the way. It has to be isolated, closed circle, murder mystery. And oh, the guest list! Stupid me, the guest list. The guest list, uh, Murder on the Orient Express, One by One by Ruth Ware. No Exit isn't, isn't a murder mystery, but it is isolated, closed circle. So isolated, closed circle is definitely one as well. I do love that. I love when you've got, you know, your, your characters are stuck in this place, maybe because of the weather or something. Uh, it's often because of the weather. It's often because of like snow or whatever. You know, a murder happens and you know it's one of the group and you know the murderer is still among you and just, oh, the tension that that creates. I love it. And it means like the evidence is contained. It's easy for beginners because the evidence is all contained. It's not like people can, you know, go off and do something else or go off and obscure evidence. Like everyone is there. And so I think it makes it easier to solve stuff. Maybe that's why I like it, but that is definitely one as well. Okay, next was Isolated, Close Circle, Murder Mysteries. I do, they get me. The, the obsession that I got with it was, was borderline unhealthy. I don't know <laughs> yeah. how I'm gonna integrate in society after this. <laughs> The drama, like I said, they're good for beginners. All the evidence is contained. All our characters are contained. There's also a lot that I've given four stars that I do think of a lot, like An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina was great. There's a lot of really great ones that I didn't necessarily give five stars, but I absolutely loved. What isolated close circle mysteries have I got on my TBR? Have I got many? I feel like I've read a lot of the ones that I have. Oh, In the Hall with the Knife by Diana Peter Freud. Another Dark Academia one as well. This is a Cluedo retelling where it's like YA. All of the Cluedo young characters are stuck in a storm at their private boarding school and the um, headmaster is murdered. So I think maybe one of them is suspected. So yeah, that's definitely one. What else have we got? Is the Christmas murder game one? I feel like that is one. Yeah, Snowstorm cuts them off from the village. <laughs> That's one. I think I'll be reading that in December, The Christmas Murder Game, which came out last year to not the highest of praise. <laughs> So anyway, that's a few that I'm excited to read soon. I really do, I notice, for my adult fantasy, I prefer it to have beautiful lyrical writing, like A Skin Full of Shadows, I would say by Frances Harding, Erin uh, Morganston, My Queen, Where Is She? <laughs> you know, The Starless Sea. I'd say Alex E. Harrow as well. I would say almost without fail, if I read a fantasy that has this almost like fairy tale like you know the plot may be a bit skewer but who cares and it almost feels as if there's like a narrator above everything narrating it i think i love that if that counts as one i think i need to make sure that i prioritize but it's hard because i feel like a lot of people when i watch them review fantasy that isn't necessarily something this isn't necessarily something they always point out especially if it's not something they're looking for but i need to prioritize fantasy that has this kind of gorgeous like rich abundant writing so next was you know lyrical beautiful fantastical writing a lot of my favorite fantasy books i would say do have this element to them like erin morganston my queen i bow down to you <laughs> in terms of ones on my tbr unraveler by francis harding is my next francis harding i'll probably read and i've read a little bit of it and that definitely has it but like i said i don't feel like people mention this when reviewing books as much as i would like them to i feel like maybe daughter of the moon goddess might have this style of writing which if so let me add them <laughs> Let me read it right now. We need this. This is essential. This is a crisis. I feel like when I watch other people talk about it, I place writing at a higher 
level than other people. I often speak about some people love writing, some people love plot, some people love characters. And I feel like those three are always gonna be like different levels of importance for different people. For me, writing is number one, then plot, then characters. A lot of people I watch, I feel like characters is number one. So that's what they're gonna talk about. So, you know, people have different levels of importance for different stuff in books. So I feel like I just don't, hear people say, oh, this has beautiful writing, lyrical writing, the kind of vibe that I'm looking for, because it's a specific vibe. You can have beautiful writing, but not the Alex E. Harrow's, Erin Morgenstern's, Francis Harding's of the world. Like that's a certain vibe that's difficult to pin down and difficult to know before you read it that a book is gonna have that. I will say, I, al I also do love strong female celebrity memoirs. I'm not big on reading celebrity memoirs, but I feel like, you know, there's just a certain aura about all the ones I do like. Like, uh, I'm glad my mum died, I gave five stars. Listen, the meaning of Mariah Carey, let me get it up here. If you've ever thought about liking Mariah Carey, <laughs> she's an icon. The audiobook of this is so good, so good. Uh, Becoming by Michelle Obama I loved and I guess like hearing, you know, with someone like Mariah Carey, there's like, we know the outward persona of her and that definitely is one thing, but I like reading an autobiography and learning something about them that I didn't know before. So strong female memoirs, right? <laughs> I don't really have many on my TBR. I feel like I kind of read them often by chance and then just enjoy reading them. I have a lot of like non-fiction about women on my TBR. These aren't necessarily celebrities, but I think, you know, a hard hitting memoir that I do have is Educated by Tara Westover. I still haven't read this. This is probably now one of the oldest books on my TBR. This is about a girl who I believe wasn't taught. Yeah, her family grew up preparing for the end of days and so she didn't go to school, had no medical records, and when she gets older she decides to teach herself. I also do have a biography of Maud West, lady detective, who opened her own detective agency in 1905, which is pretty unheard of for a woman to do that. So I do really want to read this as well and I feel like Maud like takes no prisoners. Like Maud would like, you know, you don't want to come up against Maud is what I'm saying. So I feel like this could be a good kind of Similar thing in that vein, but I don't think I have anything else on my TBR of this nature. Okay, this one I think is probably too broad, but I would say it's probably over 50% of the graphic novels I've ever read, I've given five stars. You know, Heartstopper, I gave five stars. The Tea Dragon Society, I gave five stars. Recently, I gave Delicates five stars. I feel like I don't tend to read a lot of graphic novels, but I do think it's probably over 50% of the graphic novels that I have read are given five stars. I do tend to give <laughs> most of my graphic novels five stars. Like looking at my at my graphic novels that I've read, I do give a lot of graphic novels five stars. I currently don't have a lot of graphic novels on my TBR. I definitely need to get a few more. Let's also specify cute graphic novels. She's huge, but she's so beautiful. She's a mammoth, of course. This is, okay, I should have further specified cute, wholesome cinnamon roll graphic novels is what I give five stars. I do have the last two Tea Dragon books. I keep saving these for like a rainy day, <laughs> but I do, I should probably read, I think Festival is the one I want to read, in, I need to read next. This is a prequel and then this is the last book. So I reckon, I'm, I'm having a thought, right? I do want to take part in Weekend Ween this year and I know one of the prompts is like, read something with a monster and I feel like I could read this because the tea dragons are like little monster creatures as if you know let's let's reclaim the word monster monsters don't have to be scary so maybe i'll read this because it's good for a readathon maybe i'll do that let me know if you approve <laughs> I also think I love books, and they can't, they can be hard to come across, that sit perfectly at the 33%, 32%, 80% intersection of history, fantasy, mystery. We have got Strange Cases Alchemist Daughter, of course, again, <laughs> is one. Once and Future Witches, I think, could be classed as that. A Skin Full of Shadows, absolutely another one of those. Devil in the Dark Water, I think, would support that as well, in some regards. Crooked Kingdom, I think, you know, though it's set in like another world, I do think it has like a historical, you know, element to it. It does feel like older than our current time. So yeah, books that sit at that intersection, I'm always looking for more of them. This is probably one of the things I'm constantly looking for most, is books at that intersection of historical fantasy mystery. I adore it. Like I can't describe to you how much I love it. Books on my TBR 
that fit this. I'm not sure I really have many. If I had to guess, maybe When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. I've heard Kelly Barnhill also has beautiful writing as well, so maybe this could fulfill a few different ones. This is set in America in 1955. Maybe The Gilded Wolves as well. Maybe that's another good option. But yeah, I'm constantly looking for books that are like 30, 30, 30% of these different genres. So if you ever know any, please let me know. And I will say, I think the last one would be, and I do love like contemporary books. And by that, I don't mean like, you know, contemporaries. I mean, books set in the present day in our world with like a slight speculative edge to them with something that's not quite right. So I think Broken Girls by Simone St. James definitely classes at this. Um, Dig by A.S. King is another one. You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno. To some extent, Horrid by Katrina Leno, although I think that does veer, you know, a bit more into the speculative than I guess the other examples that I'm talking about. But yeah, something that's set in our world, can be any genre, but something that's set in our world, in our time, but has like a little bit of something that goes beyond the, uh, the laws of nature that we suppose exist. So yeah, the last one is like, speculative, slightly speculative, a little bit weird, a little bit strange, just a little hint of like something being off. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I feel like in terms of horror, maybe And the Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigich. This is about these girls who go to live at their aunt's home and like the woods, the trees start moving in on them. And this is definitely told in a very like unique way. Also kind of mixed media as well, I guess. It seems to have letters, lots of like, different ways of writing and telling the story. So this is mm, yeah, another one I need to get to soon. It's interesting seeing books that like fulfill more than one because you're like, wow, that that needs to happen. I definitely need to read the two Anna Marie Macmores that I own. I haven't read from Anna Marie Macmore before, but probably one of the authors I keep wanting to try out the most. This one can also be difficult to know because until you start a book, you don't necessarily know to what extent a book is gonna go there. But if anyone has any recommendations for more books that think fit this vibe, your A.S. King, Nina Lacour, Katrina Leno, I feel like all kind of fit in this kind of genre, please let me know any recommendations that you have. Okay, so there we have it. That was my five star audit, trying to figure out what I actually give five stars. And I feel like it was pretty successful. It's highlighted a few books on my TBR that I definitely need to read soon because they fulfill certain elements of this. Maybe when I put my TBR back in its usual places, <laughs> I will be able to like visualize it a bit more. But you guys, it's actually really upsetting me not having my TBR, how it's usually put in its normal place. Like it's really, it's really upset me to my core. It's <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you were to do a five star audit, what are some things that you think would come up? Like mixed media, speculative, sisters, like which features do you think you tend to give five stars? And if you have any recommendations for books that fulfill one or multiple of these features, please let me know. Cause that is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for books that I am probably gonna have a good, chance of liking or loving based on the features that I already know I love multiple times. So yeah, if you got into the end, what should we comment? Comment a star emoji. Comment a star emoji if you got to the end. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.